All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we've got the LS9 powered third gen again. This car, you guys are gonna get, kind of get to see a payoff of something I talked about before. So this car was heavily restricted on exhaust. Customer went back and had three inch exhaust put on there. So it has already changed a bunch of fueling, transient fuels different, everything seems different. So that's usually a good sign. It usually means we picked up some power. So let's go ahead and get this thing back up on the dyno. Go in and put the wide band in here and see how much power it makes with the upgraded exhaust now versus what it made before. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm gonna do my best to manage audio in this car. I'm sure y'all can probably hear right now, but it is super loud. So the car is basically open exhaust now with just some little bitty, like one chamber Flowmaster style mufflers. But, anyways, the tune on the car has changed drastically. Now, obviously, not the physical tune, but just this exhaust alone is exhaust, and he changed fuel pumps. I've double checked fuel pressure to make sure fuel pressure is still right where it needs to be. But this exhaust has just changed changed everything. So as you guys can see right now, I mean, I'm, you know, seven to 10% off on fueling right now. And I'm sure it's only gonna get worse. So anyways, car strap, car strap down. I'm gonna go ahead on dynos and vehicle simulation mode. So let's go ahead on and just kind of sweep through the car is in map only right now. All right, so, so far everything looks pretty decent. The only thing I am noticing is we're getting a whole lot of swing on closed loop fueling. Here, I'm, I'm gonna shut the car off. Let me get it stopped and I'll shut it off. Okay, so I am noticing quite a bit of swings on closed loop fueling. And I don't think I've showed you guys that before, but if basically as you watch the oxygen sensors oscillate, you will notice that fuel trim start to get pretty rowdy. See, not necessarily right there. Anyways, I'm seeing like a 14% swing on closed loop fueling and we can make a little bit of adjustment on that. So what we can do is go to fuel oxygen sensors and we scroll down to the bottom. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at proportional fueling. So basically what we've got is this airflow mode right here. This is going to be essentially like a ratio of, what's the best way to put it? Just let me just read the description of it because I know what it does, but trying to break it down for you guys. So this says proportional base rate table is primary amount of fuel needed to drive the closed loop fuel control into oscillation. Proportional fuel acts like an on off switch to keep the fuel moving around the O2 rich lean versus mode table set point. Basically what I'm getting at is if you look at the bottom, it says the amount of fuel to add, add or subtract increases with airflow mode and should be based on injector size and percent of fuel switching needed. So right now I'm seeing like 14% swing and I'd really like to see like a six or 7% swing. So what I'm gonna do, this should be roughing it in, is I'm gonna go to airflow mode and I'm gonna half this thing. Now, obviously the injector size in this thing is quite a bit larger. I don't know if you guys remember or not, but this thing has some ID1300s and this is one of the ECUs that is limited to the 63 pound per hour. So we've already had to do quite a bit of trickery as it is. But anyway, so I'm gonna half that and see if that gets proportional back in close. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead on and get the dyno over, I'm trying to think, cause this car has traction problems. I mean, this is an LS9 on like 18 pounds, 19 pounds on like a 235 street tire on the back. So trying to get it to manage traction on the dyno is a little bit tricky. I know the first hit, hit it's gonna spin. So what I'll do is I'll go in and set the dyno up. We're gonna do like a 3,000 to 6,000 sweep. Timing table, everything else should be good. So I'm just gonna be watching fueling. So I'm gonna go ahead on and load in the file for with a proportional change and we're going to a rip. We're gonna do a 3,000 to 6,000 RPM sweep. I'm gonna be paying attention to air fuel. If air fuel goes lean, then I'm gonna lift. I have no idea what it's gonna do. If it goes lean, if it goes rich. With this being math based, theoretically, it should just go, it should stay on track or have decent air fuel ratio, but he did change the fuel pumps. So we may end up going rich, which it is what it is. Hopefully you guys can even hear me. This car is loud. Probably gonna spin, but we'll see. So 
So it definitely spun. I also need to increase the eddy brake load. It's ripping through it too fast. But either way, I, I ran a little bit higher because it kind of happened a little bit faster than I thought. But yeah, we'll get out and see what kind of power this thing made. I'm kind of excited. I'm curious to see what it made. All right guys, so the first rip, it made 570 horsepower, 6 14 foot pounds of torque. Now, when you look at the data log, you'll see what's going on. The thing is at eight degrees of timing right now. Like I had this thing severely under time due to the super restrictive exhaust. But if you haven't seen the other video on this car, I'll link it up top. But I think the best it made was like 589 horsepower and like 580 foot pounds of torque. And that was on like 15 degrees. And again, I'm seeing eight degrees on this thing right now. So it's about to pick up a shitload of power. All right, so looking through the data log, now obviously i told you guys i wasn't sure where fuel ratio was going to be and we were in the ballpark ish so this thing again it had fuel pressure drop before so you guys will see where all of a sudden injector duty cycle climbs and then the car starts to richen up that is just due to where the fuel pressure was dropping before so i was adding fuel to the math and the car just wasn't richening up so now we have more than enough fuel so now i'm gonna have to pull that back out and also you'll see the dyno should have made peak power at 5000 and that is because that is basically the spot where it had the most timing but as it started to climb timing fell down so we literally just did a pull on a severely under timed ls9 i went from like 11 degrees like 15 degrees last time and it picked up like 20 or 30 wheel it just wasn't worth it like these cars should pick up a lot of power per degree of timing. So I pulled everything back down and just told him, hey, the car's making good power for, obviously, I mean, this is a third gen with a 4L80 on a 235 street tire. So even the 600 wheel or whatever it made before, car was nuts. Like all it would do is do burnouts, but now it's about to get real stupid. So anyways, they hadn't been beating on it. So they went ahead and did the exhaust. So that, I mean, we're already up like, uh, what is that? Like 30 or 40 foot pounds of torque on way way less timing so this thing's about to get rowdy so anyways i'm gonna go ahead on and make the math adjustments and double check ve adjustment and we're gonna put some timing in this thing and she should make some steam here in just a, just a few all right tune file is loaded in put a little bit of timing in the thing basically what i'm doing is i'm just turning on the ethanol modifier and pulled some fuel from up top where the fuel pressure had dropped before We'll see what it does. This one's gonna be 3,000 to 6,600. All right, so still going rich. Kind of expected that, but let's get out and see what kind of power it made. As y'all can see, we're at roughly 12 and a half degrees of timing right now. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I would've thought it would've picked up more than that. 601, 622. So that's on 12 degrees, 17 and a half pounds, 12 degrees. So, I mean, we can try to put some more timing in the thing, see if it picks up, but I honestly thought that that should have just picked it up like, I would've guessed 60 or 70 horsepower and it picked it up like, 31. Not really feeling that at the moment, but anyways, I'm gonna dig back in the data log. I know it was a little bit rich up top, so we'll just keep working through it. I mean, obviously this is an LS9, so we can keep going. I just really thought it was gonna make more power than that just then. All right, so you guys can go through the log with me. You'll see the EQ commanded is gonna change based off of boost, because I am using a two bar operating system on this thing. So you will notice that that changes, but I'm pretty much just commanding like 76 Lambda, and you'll see the actual right here. So we're close but we are still rich and we're quite a bit richer up top. Not like terribly rich, but anyways, you guys can see, saw a peak of like 18 and a half pounds right here, 14 and a half degrees. And then it pulls down to 12 degrees and then boost kind of fluctuates a little bit. But I mean, for the most part, it hovers right around 17 and a half, 18 pounds. So we get as rich as like 71 Lambda up top. So I really was expecting this car to pick up more power than that. Not a real big fan of it not picking up a ton of power, but in the world of LS9s, right now I am still pretty under-timed for ethanol for sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make a fuel change, try to pull some more fuel off the car, and I will add a little bit more timing and we'll see if the car picks up. If it doesn't pick up a ton, I honestly don't know what it could be. I don't like instances like this, like 
I did. I, I tried to make a video Friday on a, on my buddy Rick's Crown Vic, and I ended up screwing up the audio. So you'll have to wait for his video to come out, and I'll post it. When we pick up 30 to 40 horsepower per degree of timing, that's what I like to see. When I see, you know, I just stuck in like three and a half degrees, and we picked up like 30 horsepower. Like I don't like seeing 10 horsepower per degree of timing. Either way, I'll push this thing a little bit harder. But if we don't see the gains. I don't really know what else to say because I mean the exhaust it's big it's good exhaust it's three inch I mean it's crush bent but dual three inch even though with it's crush bent and with the little mufflers at the back I feel like it I mean obviously the car did pick up power but I feel like it should pick up a whole lot more than this so we may have maybe have something else going on not real sure just yet I'm gonna lean the thing out I'm gonna pull up more timing in here we'll see if it picks up and I hope it does you guys can see what the ECU is thinking I mean the ECU is thinking 814 horsepower flywheel which I 100% agree with and I mean, it could just be that with this nine inch and the four lady, like maybe it's just not putting the power down as good. I don't know. All right. So hopefully this, uh, hopefully this helps. We're going to do another 3,000 to 6,600 pool. done for the day have no idea what kind of power it made we'll find out here in just a second but belt no longer exists all right so we're definitely starting to see some gains 642.8 horsepower 637.6 foot pounds of torque that was on 15 degrees of timing 15 to 16 and when i tried 15 other like the last time i was here i think the most it made was like 589 so we're definitely up like 50 ish horsepower so far but unfortunately uh fortunately the alternator belt decided to disappear so i don't think it did any damage but you guys can see it sticking up so it's fairly common for me to have a belt loot you know disappear on the dyno i just wasn't expecting the alternator belt so it must have been rubbing something so anyways i'm going to call the customer and see what he wants to do but that may have us done on this car for the day all right so we got to sweep in under the car and i mean there's just a lot of belt chunks but then i found this and then i was like uh-oh that ain't good then i found that that's cam sensor wiring so it looks like idler pulley somehow hit thermostat housing and then somehow belt tensioner hit the harmonic balancer. So definitely not good. So we're not gonna be able to finish this car on video at all. So we're gonna, like I said earlier, we're gonna keep the power level the same. So it's probably about all you guys need to see and then I'll finish the drivability stuff up on the street and we'll call it good. But it's, it's pretty unfortunate, but just wanted to show you guys some of the catastrophic stuff that happens when on the dyno. So it's not so much as, you know, guys think, seem to think that engines just blow up all the time. They really don't, but I get a lot of stuff like this. So not my favorite, but it'll get fixed and it'll be good to go. This is going to be a good power level for this car. I mean, 642 wheel on this is like 700, 720 on a Dynajet and on a two, whatever this is, two, 225, 60, 16 tire. It's never going to work anyways. So the car will live a long life at this power level, but I think there was another probably 35 to 40 left in it safely. So we can always turn it up one day if they get a good tire on here and finish the car up. Maybe maybe they'll want to turn it up some more, but I mean, that's a, that's a lot of power. But anyways, so we're just going to call it done. I'll finish up the street tuning, which shouldn't take me long because I mean, all they did was change the exhaust, finish that stuff up and we'll be good to go. 